Is abortion morally permissible? Philosophers and medical professionals have been debating this issue for many years. Usually you hear that the debate centers around whether or not the fetus is a person. But a philosopher named Judith Thompson thinks abortion is permissible even if the fetus is a person. So, for the sake of the argument, she agrees that a fetus is a person. Now, how is her argument supposed to go from there? First, let's take a look at the traditional pro-life argument. The argument goes something like this. First, fetuses are innocent persons from conception. Second, it is impermissible to kill innocent persons. Therefore, abortion is impermissible. Now, she's already agreed that premise 1 is true, so this means she has to deny premise 2. In other words, she has to claim it is false, that it's always impermissible to kill innocent persons. Sometimes, it is okay to kill innocent persons. But this seems like a stretch. Isn't it clearly always wrong to kill innocent persons? Thompson asks you this. Imagine you're kidnapped by the Society of Music Lovers. The Society adores a famous violinist who has fallen ill. Luckily, they found you. A perfect blood type match. The only match, actually. They take you captive against your will and knock you unconscious. When you finally wake up, you find yourself in a medical facility attached to the famous violinist. You're basically his living dialysis machine. So, since you're the only blood match for him, if you unplug from him, he'll die. Thompson then asks you this. Is it permissible for you to unplug yourself from the violinist? You'll kill him if you do. And maybe you shouldn't. He has a right to life after all. He's an innocent person. But clearly, Thompson argues, you have a right to unplug yourself from him. You've not gotten, you've not given him permission to use your body. If we own anything at all, surely we own our own bodies. The society took you against your will, so clearly you should be able to unplug from the violinist. This is analogous to abortions in the case of rape. Getting pregnant due to rape is exactly like being kidnapped against your will and plugged into the violinist. Sure, the fetus has a right to life. It's an innocent person, after all. But since we think it's okay to unplug yourself from the violinist, we agree that there is at least one case where killing an innocent person is morally permissible. And the sorts of cases where it seems okay to kill an innocent person is when they're dependent on your body against your will. So this argument establishes that abortion is permissible in the case of pregnancy due to rape. Your response might be that abortions in such cases is rare. Well, are there any other cases in which it's permissible to kill an innocent person? Thompson says yes. Imagine that you're stuck in a house with a child that's expanding at a rapid rate. You can't leave the house. And in a short time, the child will be so big that it'll crush you. The only way you won't die is if you kill the growing child. The child will live if it keeps growing, but you certainly won't. Is it permissible to kill the child? If you have the same intuition as Thompson, you'll think yes, of course it's permissible. You're defending yourself. Notice that this intuition says it's okay to kill the child even though it's an innocent person. This is analogous to the case of pregnancy where the mother's life is in danger. The child in the womb is an innocent person, but since the mother has a right to self-defense, we might think it's permissible for her to kill the child to save herself. So, here's another instance where it's morally okay to kill an innocent person. Thompson argues that it's permissible to kill an innocent person in one more case. For this last example, imagine that people seeds are floating in the air. A little fanciful, but stick with me for a sec. If a people seed lands on your carpet, behold, a child springs up. You want to enjoy the fresh air, but you don't want any unwelcome company in your house. So you put up all sorts of protective measures to stop the people seeds from floating in. Maybe some fine mesh screens or the finest laser security system to zap the seeds out of the sky. But even after all your efforts, a seed manages to fly into your house and a child embeds itself in your rug. Is it permissible to remove the people seed? Thompson will say yes. You didn't invite that seed in. In fact, you did everything you could possibly do, short of closing your window, to keep it out. Since it's your house and you did everything to prevent the unwelcome people seed from flying in, you should be able to remove that seed. Thompson argues that this is similar to abortion in the case of pregnancy due to contraception failure. If you did everything to prevent pregnancy, but you still find yourself pregnant, you have a right to an abortion. Notice again that the fetus in this case is an innocent person. Yet, if you have the same idea as Thompson, you'll think it's morally okay to remove the people seeds from your house. So you should think it's okay to have an abortion. So, to conclude, Thompson says abortion is permissible in three cases. In the case of pregnancy due to rape, contraception failure, or when the mother's life is in danger. Thank you for watching 5-Minute Ethics. Be sure to keep an eye out for future videos.